OK, so we're going to have a look at two proofs of this inequality, that 1 plus x is less than or equal to e to the x, which is true for all real numbers x. So our first proof relies on the limit definition of e to the x. So we can define e to the x for any real number x as the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus x over n, all raised to the power of n. And this first proof is essentially just using the same sort of inequality over and over iteratively. So let's show what we mean. If we start with 1 plus x, we know that 1 plus x is going to be less than or equal to 1 plus x plus anything positive here. And if I turn this into a plus x squared over 4, you can see this inequality is certainly true. We've just added something positive there. And the reason that I've added this x squared over 4 term is that then when we factorise this new quadratic, which is bigger than our 1 plus x term, we have a 1 plus x over 2 all squared. So you can check now when you expand this quadratic, we get 1 plus x plus x squared over 4. And the next step is just to apply the same sort of procedure now to our 1 plus x over 2 term inside this bracket. So once again, 1 plus x over 2, this is going to be less than or equal to 1 plus x over 2 plus something positive. And our something positive that we're going to use here is going to be x squared over 16 now. And the reason I've chosen 16 here is so that again, when we factorise this, we get 1 plus x over 4 all squared. So you can check when you expand these brackets, you get back to 1 plus x over 2 plus x squared over 16. And we keep going like this. So now with our 1 plus x over 4 term, we can apply the same procedure. 1 plus x over 4 is less than or equal to 1 plus x over 4 plus, it will now be x squared over 64, so that when we factorise this we have 1 plus x over 8 all squared like this. So why are we doing this? Well, if we start with 1 plus x, we've shown that 1 plus x is less than or equal to 1 plus x over 2 all squared. But then we've also got an upper bound on our 1 plus x over 2, so we know that 1 plus x over 2 is less than or equal to 1 plus x over 4 all squared. So we know that this is now less than or equal to 1 plus x over 4 all squared, and again squared. So this is 1 plus x over 4 raised to the power of 4. But we don't stop there. We can now get our upper bound on 1 plus x over 4, which is 1 plus x over 8 all squared. And we can apply this. So now we know that our 1 plus x over 4 raised to the power of 4 is now less than or equal to 1 plus x over 8 all squared raised to the power of 4, which gives us a 1 plus x over 8 raised to the power of 8. And at this point you might start to see the pattern emerging that 1 plus x is less than or equal to 1 plus x over 2 all squared, which is less than or equal to 1 plus x over 4 all raised to the power of 4. This is less than or equal to 1 plus x over 8 all raised to the power of 8. So we start to see this structure now of our limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus x over n, all raised to the power of n. And now we'll explore how we can use this argument to prove our inequality. So at each step, this relies on the fact that we've got 1 plus x over some power of 2, so let's call this 2 to the power of m, and we know that this is less than or equal to 1 plus x over 2 to the m plus anything squared here for any real number x. And our something squared, we essentially just need to take x over 2 to the m, we halve this and then square that so that when we expand the bracket we get back to 1 plus x over 2 to the m. So what we're looking for is half of this will be x over 2 to the m plus 1, but then we square this so we have x squared over 2 to the 2m plus 2, and you can check that this factorises now into 1 plus x over 2 to the power of m plus 1, all squared. And this is particularly useful now because we have this chain of inequalities. We've shown that 1 plus x is less than or equal to 1 plus x over 2 all squared, which is less than or equal to 1 plus x over 4 all raised to the power of 4, and so on. And then we know now that this is going to be less than or equal to 1 plus x over 2 to the m all raised to the power of 2 to the m. So if we wanted to be a little bit more formal here, a bit more rigorous, we could turn this into a proof by induction, and perhaps this could be our inductive step. But then we've just seen now that this is now going to be bounded from above. We've got 1 plus x over 2 to the m is less than or equal to 
1 plus x over 2 to the n plus 1 all squared. So when we now take this squared inside, we have 1 plus x over 2 to the m plus 1. Then this 2 to the m multiplied by 2 gives us 2 to the m plus 1 as our power on the outside of the bracket. And this is really useful now because then we've essentially shown that for all values of m, so for all positive integers m, we know that 1 plus x is going to be less than or equal to 1 plus x over 2 to the power of m, all raised to the power of 2 to the m, like this. And you can see now this is really useful because when we take limits as m goes to infinity, the limit will preserve this, this inequality will be preserved here. So we've got 1 plus x is less than or equal to the limit as m goes to infinity of 1 plus x over 2 to the m, all raised to the power of 2 to the m. So now there are some details that are omitted here. So for example, e to the x is really defined as the limit over all integers n as n goes to infinity of 1 over x to the n raised to the power of n. Whereas here we're just taking the limit along a certain subsequence where our, instead of having all integers n, we've just got powers of 2, so 2 to the m. But there's some details you can fill in here if you're really interested, but essentially the limit along this subsequence is still going to be equal to the same limit here as n goes to infinity of 1 plus x over n all raised to the power of n which we know is just equal to e to the power of x. So then we've shown, omitting some details with our proof by induction and with the limit being along a subsequence there, we've shown that 1 plus x is less than or equal to this limit, so 1 plus x is going to be less than or equal to e to the power of x for all real values of x. Now for our second proof, we'll again explore this idea of using proof by induction. So we could actually try to show for integer values of n at least that e to the n is greater than or equal to 1 plus n, so perhaps for all integer values of n. Then we could even attempt to generalise this so that then once we've proven it for integers, we can try and extend the inequality to hold for real values x. And we could do this using the floor function. So e to the x would have to be greater than or equal to e to the floor function of x, which turns it then into a nice integer power. So here we're using the fact that the floor function is just what you get when you round down, essentially. So x would be greater than or equal to the floor function of x, and this would be bigger than x minus 1. It would actually be strictly greater than x minus 1 here. So we can use this inequality to take e to any real power. This is now greater than or equal to e to the power of the floor function of x, which then, because the floor function of x is an integer, this would be greater than or equal to 1 plus the floor function of x then at this point we run into a problem because the floor function of x is actually less than or equal to x. So in general it wouldn't be true that this is less than or equal to 1 plus x. So it seems like this sort of approach isn't quite going to work. But actually we can redeem this by showing that instead of e to the n being greater than 1 plus n, we could show that e to the n is greater than or equal to 2 plus n. And this works at least for all values of n greater than or equal to 2. So here, for all integers n greater than or equal to 2, we'll be able to show this. So now I'll just show how we can use the floor function then to finish off our proof, then we'll fill in all of the details with our proof by induction in a sec. So if we were able to show this for all values of n greater than or equal to 2, then for all values of x greater than or equal to 2, we can say e to the x is bigger than e to the floor function of x, which is now e to an integer greater than or equal to 2. So this is greater than or equal to 2 plus the floor function of x, and now we know that the floor function is bigger than x minus 1, so the floor function of x here we can replace this by 2 plus x minus 1, which gives us our 1 plus x. So if we're able to show that this is true for all values of n greater than or equal to 2, then we can also say that for all values of x greater than or equal to 2, e to the x would indeed be greater than or equal to 1 plus x. So I'll clear some board space now, then we'll finish off this proof by induction. So the first step is just to verify our base case that this inequality 2 plus n less than or equal to e to the n is true when n equals 2. So we can just check when n equals 2, we've got 2 plus n is 2 plus 2 or 4, and this is indeed less than or equal to e squared, because e squared is around 7. So you can see that the inequality is satisfied then for our base case where n is 2. So now for our proof by induction, 
we're going to assume that for some integer value of n, n greater than or equal to 2, so we assume that the inequality holds, that 2 plus n is less than or equal to e to the n, then we want to show that the same inequality holds now for n plus 1, so 2 plus n plus 1 is less than or equal to e to the n plus 1. And to prove this, we'll just start with our inductive hypothesis that 2 plus n is less than or equal to e to the n for this value of n. Then we're just going to add 1 to both sides of this inequality. So we have 2 plus n plus 1 is less than or equal to e to the n plus 1. So now we're going to take some rather loose upper bounds here. So we know that 1 is definitely going to be less than or equal to e to the n because n is greater than or equal to 2. So actually 1 is going to be much less than e to the n. So this allows us then to write e to the n plus 1 as being less than or equal to e to the n plus another e to the n, or less than or equal to 2 times e to the n. So then another loose upper bound we can use here is just the fact that e is bigger than 2. So 2 is less than or equal to e, which means that we can replace this 2 now by another e. So this is all less than or equal to e times e to the n, or it's less than or equal to e to the n plus 1, which is what we were trying to show. So we wanted to show that 2 plus n plus 1 was less than or equal to e to the n plus 1, and we've done this now. So all that's left to do is to just extend this to include any real number x. So now it's just a matter of saying that e to the power of x is less than or equal to e to the power of the floor function of x. And then using our result, which is true for integers n, we can say that this is greater than or equal to 1 sorry, 2 plus the floor function of x, because the floor function of x is an integer greater than or equal to 2 here. And then we know that the floor function of x is greater than or equal to x minus 1. So this is now greater than or equal to 2 plus x minus 1, like this. And we know that 2 plus x minus 1 is 1 plus x. So we've shown then that for all real values of x greater than or equal to 2, this e to the x is indeed greater than or equal to 1 plus x. So this is true then for all values of x, any real number greater than or equal to 2. So now we haven't shown this for values of x less than 2. But I still think it's really interesting that we can use a proof by induction at all here. I think it's really neat to see how we can generalise the result from holding for integer values of n and see how we can extend the inequality to hold for real numbers x greater than or equal to 2.